Hi, welcome back to Beginning Fabrication. This is episode 13. Uh, I've, I think I said last time I had a, a dude ask me to, to show something, like a suggestion, which I'm going to do, but there's something else that's come up now that I'm gonna do first. So whether, depending on how long I spend filming this, uh, whether this suggestion is in this episode or not, I don't know yet. But anyway, uh, it should be an interesting uh, episode. Um, another guy asked me if I could show how I use the Brickies bolster. Um, and that was only a couple of days ago, so that works in really well with his job that just came in yesterday. So I'll nick off and show you what we're doing today. <laughs> Cheers. So a dude that I've met through Facebook named Steve Put me onto the guy that owns this bonnet for a 55 f100 i think this one's the panel truck haven't actually seen the car yet um, and it's got a hole in it for where a ugly ass hornet scoop used to be screwed onto it so my job is just to fill the hole and um, so i'll clean all of this gunk out and get all the edges cleaned up eventually but the first thing we're all going to do is just get a basic measurement, which is, I always go over, see my ruler is 20 mil over, so I'll come back and just say 500 mil is a good start, because it's a lot easier to, especially if you're shaping something, if you make something that's got a little bit more handle on it, it's easier to do the bends, because we're going to do a lot of this kind of stuff just by hand, these sort of radiuses. And width wise, I'm not going to bother trying to cut out far, further than these holes, I'm just going to stick with the actual main hole itself. So back here it's about 2.30 and I'm just going to drag it up and make sure that, yeah, so it gets a little bit wider there. Because I also need to factor in that the, um, the shaping of this, if I cut this exactly at 2.30 which is pretty much dead on in that one spot where it's wide. By the time I've put these bends in, it won't be 230 wide anymore. So I think I'm gonna just go with 250, give myself plenty of meat. <laughs> I wish I had plenty of meat. Anyway, so I'll do it at 250, which I might even go 260, just to be sure. So 500 by 250, a lot of the times I'll write that down, but I don't have my pencil on me, so I won't just now, but normally I just scribble it on the piece of metal that I'm gonna cut to make the piece. So I'll, uh, I'll get that cut, and I might even just give around here a bit of a sand up for now. And then eventually I'll go around with the grinding disc. There's a grinding disc. Again, I apologise for my extreme snottiness. Uh, so, when things like this aren't particularly clean, I'll obviously have this on the grinder. I'll just, I'll just round that out. Um, you can draw on it, but I'm, you know, I'm not too bad at just making things neat just by eye. So I'll just use the edge of the grinding disc to, to round out all these edges. And same with at the back. Um, because not only does it just look nicer when you're working with it, that's kind of relevant. The main reason I do it is because it's easier for me to then transfer that neat shape onto the replacement piece. Whereas if something's all janky and has all weird little bits and pieces, more than likely you're going to end up with gaps in those spots because it's hard to cut out. It's a lot harder to cut out a weird, uneven shape than it is to cut out a nice smooth curve or a straight line. So that's my reasoning for that. So I'll get some stuff prepped and uh, then we'll be back and bend some metal. So I've just given this a quick clean up with uh, where is it? this fella, die grinder with another 36 grit roll lock on it. And I'll cut my piece and mark the center line because it'll have the, the rib. The rib shape will have to go on that. You can see it's oversized, which is what I wanted. So now we can go and put a shape into it. 
actually another thing while I think of it. We'll be back in a sec. This is a profile gauge. It's just made up of lots of little plastic leaves. Just use that to get the contour of the, the front of the bonnet. This was, I don't know, 20 bucks or something on eBay from some eBay panel supply shop. But then I've also got this little thing that I got from, I don't know, Crazy Clarks or one of those places just by a flute because I don't think I've seen them there again since. And you just push them on and it gives you the, the shape. Actually, that'd be handy having the front and the back anyway because the front and the back of this are going to be different shapes. So I'll bring both of these over to where we're going to start bending metal. Okay, so to do the first bend, um, I'm actually going to use this piece of angle, which because it's a thick wall, I think it's 100 mil by 100 mil by quarter inch. You can see it's got quite a, a pointy outer corner. Now, the, as we can tell by our profile gauges, that the, the point doesn't want to be particularly pointy. Um, but because I'm not going to do this bend in the folder, I'm just going to show you how I used to do it. And I just find it easier to, to first get the first crease into the metal with a sharper corner and then go over to some quarter inch flat bar in the vise and, uh, and we'll keep going over the top of this. So, I don't know whether to put this on the tripod and show you or just do it. I might as well record it. So. Sorry, but you're going to have to see my stupid self in the camera in a sec. Alright, so I'm literally just going to bend this over it with my, with my hands. Because my piece of metal is a little bit shorter than, because this piece of metal is shorter than my job, I just have to be wary that I've got the, the thing lined up properly. So what I'm going to do first is just do a quick guesstimate. And then I'll just put a little bend at this end. See it's started the bend but it's very minor and then I can use that to set this end. And you just need to move around the piece a bit. So it's, it's got a fold probably a bit rounder than it wants to be because I'm trying to not put the steep mark into it but for the sake of showing how to how this comes into play I'll uh, I'll show you normally I'd be using this I'd mark both sides of the, the angle but normally I'd open the open the jaws of the vise probably 100 mil or so so this can sit in it that way And literally set the, the piece hovering inside the angle and then just use this on my line and just tap it, tap it as I go. So it's not really appropriate appropriate for this job so I might just do another demonstration of it later um, just on a piece that I don't need to have a, a rounder radius on it but for now we'll just go to this piece of flat bar Starting to get a radius now. Doesn't matter so much about the ends because even if the end's got a really pinched fold where we don't want it to, we can just get a different, like various size bits of pipe and use it as a dolly to flatten that out. This kind of radius that we've got going on here is probably more like what we need. So I'm just going to give it a little bit more because it's easy enough to undo it. So it's 
try and keep it reasonably even too so that the sides don't become all wavy. That's just something you can do by eye or you can just sit it on the sit it on the desk and see how flat it sits. In this case it's fine. So I think that's going to be pretty decent for our shape. A good start anyway. Let's have a look. It's not too bad actually. So Oh, nice has got me. So the next thing we want to do is to now roll it out. So there's a couple of different ways we can do that. Um, I'm just trying to think what's going to be a good way to show you. If you want to know one way that's really high tech, let's just roll this back there. Dirty shoes, but that's, that's starting to give a bit of a, a shape, and you'll find that if it does flatten that out too much, you can literally just go back to the whoop, back to the vise. Just rebend it if you need to, but this doesn't really need it. Not coming up too bad. Another thing you can do is just to press on this, but I don't really want to do that because it. That needs to be rounder. So I might just jump on it again. And also because the the taper varies front and back, you can um, jump, jump on one end a little bit more than the other. That's starting to, to shape up okay. It's sort of hard to show. It's not a very glary surface. But, um, it's getting there. Needs to straighten out a bit more. Those sides need to flare out more. As you can see, see I've flattened the top out a bit, but there's it rocks. So we'll, I think we'll just keep going this way because it's, it's not pretty, but it's going to do the job. We can just fold it again a little bit more this time. And jump on that again. Actually, before that, I have to blow my nose. So I bought in another tool, a little bit of cut-off pipe, um, just so I could use the plastic hammer just to round off, round off these bits a bit. So it's starting to starting to shape up a little bit now. It's certainly not perfect, but it's getting in the ballpark so I think now that it's semi close I'm going to go back and actually work off the bonnet now because at the end of the day it's the bonnet that it's got to line up with so that'll that'll do for shaping because I can do some more pulling and prodding on it uh, at the bonnet now so to fine tune it so that was just a quick look at making a shape with no machines at all other than a plastic hammer my feet, my device, and a couple of bits of metal. Uh, so I will do another thing, I will do another piece, I'll get a bit of scrap metal and I'll show you how to do a more clean, like a fold using the angle iron and the bolster. So I might actually do that now while I think of it, because otherwise my moron brain will forget. Alright, so I've just got a bit of scrap that I found in the pile and it's funny I saw on the back of it I actually did this I don't know a few months ago to send to a guy to, through uh, Facebook message because he wanted to see the difference so that's the clean and strip metal finish and that's the 36 grit sanding disc metal finish so there is a, a coarseness difference there but this is definitely better for cleaning up welds and really, really grubby stuff that needs the surface changed. You know, like if there was a blob of weld on it. Whereas a clean and strip disc is literally just for for that cleaning and stripping. So 
I'll do it long ways, so we've got a longer fold. Um, I might even just go up to the side a bit, because it's too easy to do it in the middle. So, go up to the side. I'll have to use a hammer to get the, the bend in properly, but I'll start it by hand. See, that's a nice ugly belted in fold. Now, sit this in there. And literally, just as you'd think, how you do it is just how you do it. Um, because I haven't actually got this held in the vise, it's just sitting there. So, just move the piece along so that you're hitting above the vice drawers otherwise you'll knock this out of the out of the device and who knows what you'll hit. This is just one of those things where you need to be a little bit patient to keep your line straight. I'll, uh, I'll turn you off and I'll just keep bashing this because you don't need to watch me do this and then I'll show you how it turns out. Okay so <laughs> as you all know I'm not very bright and I've used this same piece that I used before which I shouldn't have because it's got a, a really radius inside. So you can see using the, the, the Bricky's bolster it leaves a little bit of a mark in the metal but nothing that's an issue. It's not like it tears the metal or anything. Um, and because I did it in the stages as I went along using the same sort of pressure it's a nice straight fold um, you know it doesn't have a bow in it or anything like that so and you can do this any length you know those Tirana inner guards we did a while ago you could definitely do that with this way you just have to move it backwards and forwards through this piece more that's all because it's a longer piece so and the longer this is too the easier it is so if you needed to do something that only had a small return on it um, you'd probably almost be better just doing it in the vise and just doing the same thing just moving it along and just folding it with the vise but um, the bolster I just find that's only a four or five inch one um, but it's long enough that it's it's pretty hard if you follow your line, it's pretty hard to, to deviate to end up with a, a bent fold. So that's the bolster. And, uh, and if I used a piece of metal that didn't have such a rounded inner profile, I would have been able to do a, a, sharper, a sharper fold than that. But you still get the gist of it anyway. So there's our patch just sitting on the bonnet. Um, the bonnet has a bit of a curve in it, uh, so the, I have actually curved that a little bit just by bending it, I actually just bent it over, the, over that. Um, and obviously it's sitting up a little bit, but that's because it's, this has got, the edge has got all dense, I don't know if you can see that it's all wobbly as well, so you know, this part here is on the high spot. So, next thing I do, I think, is I'll hammer and dolly up this edge, and then I'll do with the grinding disc, like I said, and clean up these corners. And then we can transfer some of the shape. So, obviously, I'll trace that much of it just by sketching it from underneath. But then I'm going to get to here, and obviously, I won't be able to get my pencil inside of that. So, I'll make a cardboard template for this section and then just join it in. So for now though I'll straighten this up. Alright so I've tapped around all these edges and put them a little bit 
rounder, a bit smoother in their radius. And for where this dent here was, I just used a bit of flat bar underneath and tapped the dent down. Because obviously a dolly isn't going to fit into there. Then I've used three mil, this is four or five. I've used 50 by three mil as a dolly before and it works fine on thin sheet metal. So shows it's all nice and straight now. So the next thing will be to transfer our shape. So that's the front of that traced out from underneath. I uh, I propped the bonnet up on these cans so that when I sat this on top, I had good access to the underside with my pencil. So I'll uh, I'll trim this out now to there, and then I'll make a cardboard template for this back part. And also, when I was holding the holding this on to trace it, I marked on the back here where this was, so I know where to make my template from. So that's the front part trimmed out. I trimmed it out a little bit off the line, just so I had a tiny excess to, to sand it up at the end. Um, now it looks a little bit like a, a bomb off Roadrunner or something. <laughs> so that's that bit. So now I can make a little cardboard template of this part and transfer it onto the back of this. Alright, hopefully if you've got you high enough, that's as high as my tripod will go. So I've just got my little bit of cardboard. So I'm going to line it up with my mark from where I had the steel on before. I'm going to feel around and find where that edge is and because I've got a little bit of dirty fingers as I push on the edge it actually marks the cardboard for me and then if your fingers are super clean that's when you just use a pencil, you still crease the cardboard and then just mark the edge as you go. Kind of a slow process, because the whole point of doing a template is to make sure that it's somewhat accurate. And also try not to lean on it too much. I think I was leaning on it a bit then, but and I've gone way past where I need to be anyway. But by marking more than you need to, at least you know that you're staying straight. The main reason I wanted to keep this line, well, keep it lined up with this, is so when I transfer this under the piece of steel, I know that the, they're going to be the same. They're going to start at the same point. It doesn't really matter with doing things like this if you cut the middle out and use the middle as the template or you can cut the outside out and use the, the outer part as the template. Um, because I've already got the outside part of the rest of this cut, I'm going to cut off the outside part. But what I am going to do is just keep two little feet that line up with my line that I can use to transfer that onto the the steel. So I'll cut all of this out and this out. These little feet will stay and I can just draw in that extra bit of line freehand once I've, or well, even I can trim, trim them off once the rest of this is drawn on and then trace those bits on. So I'll cut this out and transfer it onto the steel. There's my little cardboard bit cut out. Kind of looks a bit, a bit funny. So I can line that up with the bottom of the steel, those little feet. 
then I can get my pencil. Trace around this. And there's the rest of my mark out. You see two little pieces I can I can just freehand those. Because again I'm gonna give this about a little a millimetre or so extra as I cut it. And that'll be the rest of my little infill piece made. I think we need to do something with this. We do, what does it look like? I'm a terrible drawer, just so you know. fabrication pig <laughs> yep I'm an idiot sorry about that so that's now trimmed out there's about a mil left excess around a couple of bits just so that it holds itself in place but um, before I bother getting that sorted out I'm gonna rust convert and then prime in here same as I always do inside things because obviously once that goes on There'll be no getting to this, so I'll chuck some uh, rust converter on this now and then it can dry overnight and I'll prime it tomorrow. Hey Piggy! So I've got it trimmed out and even though it's not sitting in their level because it's sunken down and whatnot here and there, but it uh, fits well enough that I'm going to, once I've primed inside I'll I'll uh, start tucking it in. These little jiggers that I find really helpful are actually just old magnets out of a hard drive from a computer. They're just a good way of holding things in place, otherwise there's nothing for it to hang on to. So I've <coughs> rust converted and etched etch primed this now. Um, for little jobs like this, this is what I use. Good number for hemis. Um, obviously if you're going to do a whole car or inside a, a full inner quarter panel or something I'd, I'd use a two pack epoxy but for little things like this it's just quicker and easier to, to do it this way. I figured I may as well just show the last little bit that I bother showing of this job. Just got this tacked in. So we can have a quick sand up just to knock these MIG tacks down and then I'll then I'll pick it, so it's just butt welded in, there's no no overlap or anything. As you can see by the, there's little gaps here and there, but they'll all suck in as it gets welded. And uh, I think we need to come up with a name for this guy, what do you reckon? Well that's it for episode 13. Uh, I, I didn't get any chance to do the the suggestion job so I'll uh, I'll put that in the next episode because I think it's a good suggestion and uh, so I hope you didn't mind that I put so much effort this episode into that F100 bonnet um, it's just a good idea of good way of showing how to shape something that you know you sort of might have thought would be hard to shape but just with a bit of back and forth and a little bit of effort you can shape it with really basic tools and uh, that same sort of technique can be used if you have to make a small section of floor uh, with ribs in it or something you can you can do that same thing so I, uh, I don't know if you can see I welded it all yesterday so it's welded I just need to sand it and panel bead it I also welded the corner of that bonnet, so that's pretty exciting. 
Anyway, I'll stop yabbering on. Thanks for watching, and uh, again, any suggestions that you, you have, just feel free to ask, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.